In this video, you'll learn how to allow users to register on your site. This is great if you want to require people to register on your site before they can comment. It's also a great way to allow authors before they start writing on your site to register so that they can write or add content to your site. And I'll show you a couple different ways that you can allow users to register. And then we'll also set up a custom login page for that. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to enable user registration in WordPress. To do this, let's head over to our WordPress dashboard. Make sure you log into the back area and you'll want to scroll down to your settings area on the left and let's go to general. Under this area, let's scroll down to find the membership area and you can click on anyone can register and then you'll need to decide the new user default role. By default, it's set to subscriber, but if you're wanting to set this up as an author type setup, then you'll want to look at contributor or author, and that will allow them to add content. If you're only doing this to allow people to add comments, then you'll want to set this as subscriber. You will want to ideally keep this at the least amount of privileges and subscriber is the least amount, but you can take a look at our documentation here on seeing the different roles in WordPress and how they affect your site and how they affect user registration. So once you have this set up, scroll all the way down and let's go ahead and click save changes. Now that we've enabled registration, we need to go ahead and add something on the site so that they know that they can register. A couple of ways we can do that is we can go to appearance and let's go to widgets. So we'll add a meta widget, which will allow the login and registration part to be added to our site. And you should have a sidebar area or a footer area. This is basically wherever you're wanting this login area to go. Scrolling down, we're looking for the meta. Scrolling down, we're looking for the meta widget. This is the one we want. So I'm going to left click and drag it up to my main sidebar area and decide where I wanna put it. I'll put it at the top, give it a title, and we'll click save. Now to show you what that looks like, let's go and visit the site. This is the test site that we've been working on. So when you go to blog to show the login and user registration, you see this. This is the meta widget and it shows if you are logged in, you can click log out. You can also do site admin. And now if I log out, I'll show you what this looks like. And now if somebody comes to this site and they want to register, they can click on register and it'll take them here where they can register for the site. Now, a couple of issues that people have with that is when people log in with that, it, you see it will take them to the dashboard. Now they won't see all of this because when they're a subscriber, they'll see a lot less. But the problem is when they are here, they're able to click on site admin because we can't change all of this widget area. These are set by default and we can't make those changes. So they can click on site admin and it takes them to the back end, which is kind of confusing for your subscribers. And so there's a different way that we can do that. And now I'm going to switch to a different user to show you what it will look like for a subscriber. So this is what a subscriber will see when they're logged into my website. And you see that there's not much on the left, but it's kind of confusing if they're just wanting to comment and stuff, we don't really want them to go to the back end. So there's a couple of other ways that we can handle this and I'll show you that next. Now, as you're getting these user roles set up, you sometimes want to do a quick switching back and forth to see how it looks. As you see, if I hover over this, I can click switch to. This is not done by default. You'll actually need to install a plugin and I'm using the user switching plugin. And if you want to, you can check out the video that we created on how to set that up right here. So that's how I'm doing the switching between users so you can see what the user sees. And then the next thing we want to do is go ahead and create a custom user registration and a custom login page. To do that, we're going to use WP Forms. WP Forms is a great user-friendly contact form plugin, but it does so much more. And so we'll set this up. So you wanna make sure that you have the WP Forms installed. And then once you do that, we'll go to WP Forms. Let's go down to add-ons. And we wanna scroll down because we're looking for the user registration add-on. This is the one we want. So let's install the add-on and then it should also activate for us. Once we do that, we'll go to the left under WP Forms and click add new and we can give it a name. And then scrolling down, we see all of these templates that we can start with. The one we're wanting to use right now is the user registration form. So we'll click create user registration form and you see it gives us 
an idea that there are some other options that we can choose from in the settings panel and we'll set that up. So right out of the gate, these are all of the user registration data points that we can collect using their name, the username, their email, their password, their show, short bio, and this is great if they're an author, then this will be the author bio that we can use. And from here, we can click and drag these up or down anywhere if you want to. You can also change what the labels say by clicking on it and go to the label area and change that here if you want. You can also change the name of the submit button to something more friendly. And since we're here under settings, I'll also show you under user registration. These are all the items that will connect with the user profile on our, our default WordPress. So basically they need to fill out a username. If the username is not filled out, then it will default to their email address, which is great. The name, we're attaching that to their name in WordPress. The password, we're connecting that to the password field. You can also just auto generate that, but we'll let them decide. And then scrolling down is the user role, the default user role. This is very similar to the regular registration. If you click on this, these are all of the user roles that are associated with my site. This Yours might look a little bit different because I had an e-commerce plugin going on, but you'll see subscriber, contributor, author, editor, and administrator. We would recommend to never add the default user role to administrator. That gives way too much power to people. And you'll likely want to do subscriber, or if you're setting this up for author, then go ahead and do contributor or author, and that will let them write on your site. But for this, we'll do subscriber. And then you can decide if you want to send an email to them with their information and also send an email to the admin. And this is great so that you can see how many people are signing up for your site. Now, if you don't enable user activation, then when it sends you the email that someone has subscribed, then you have to allow that. So you want to make sure that you decide how you want that to do. And then once they click on the activation, if you sent user activation, they just have to click on the link to activate it. Then down here, you can decide what page you want to send them to. And you could create a custom page or something like the home page or the blog page for them. So you can choose all of that here. And so the user registration is pretty well done. And then let's just click save here. Now, the other cool thing about WP Forms is you could also add a couple of different things in this. If you wanted to set this up where it's a pay feature, where you have people pay to become authors, there's something that you could do here where you can accept payments. Under marketing, if you want them to become a user, then you could also connect your email marketing platform where they're also added to your email list, which is a great feature if you want to do that. We're not going to set that up today, but those are some great added extra features that you can do with WP Forms. So now that we've created this registration page, let's go ahead and save it again in case we made any changes. We're going to close this out and then we need to add this to a page for them to register. So we're going to go back to our dashboard. We'll go under pages and let's click add new. We're going to give it a title for the page. And then under here, using the new Gutenberg blocks, we can click on the little add block area and you can either scroll through and find WP forms or just start typing it in and it'll come up. So I'll click on WP forms and on the drop down, we need to pick the form that we just created, which was called user registration. So we'll pull that in here and then you can see what it looks like. Great, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and publish this and then we can see it in action on our site. So I'm gonna open up a new page and this is what our registration page looks like. Great, now that we created the custom registration page, you can also create a custom login that would kind of be a little bit better than what this looks like. So let's do that next. So let's close this out and we're gonna go back to our dashboard area. And what we wanna do is we wanna use WP Forms again so we can add a new login page. So I'm gonna click add new, can give it a name. Again, we can look at the templates and we want to use the user login form. This is the one we want. And by default, it'll bring in the custom items here. We can change the form name here. Scrolling down, there are a couple of things that we can fill out. We can enable anti-spam honeypot and that should reduce spam. 
And we can also make sure that we hide the form if the user is already logged in so it doesn't confuse them. So that looks good. And then under fields, we want to keep this simple. So we'll just keep it like that. Under submit, we'll change that to login. And then going back to fields, that looks good. Let's click save. And then one more thing that we want to do is let's go under settings. We want to give a confirmation. Basically, when they log in successfully, where do we want to send them? From here, you can choose to either just give them a message, but if they're logging in, we really kind of want to redirect them somewhere. Ideally, when they're logging in, we would want to show them a page like a welcome page. So we would also create a welcome page here, and then we could redirect them there. So you'd want to create the page and then make sure that you redirect them to that. Finally, let's click save, and let's go ahead and add this custom login to our site as well. So I'm gonna save it, exit out of WP Forms. And then again, we can create a special page called login. And there are two things we can do with this. We'll do a special page for login, give it a title, go to my Gutenberg blocks, find WP Forms. From the dropdown, find the login page that I just created. And there it is. And what's great about adding it to the page is you could also make the page a little bit more user-friendly. You could go here and add an image of your site, dress it up a little bit, add a little bit of content here if you want to. So that's the beauty of adding a special page here. And then let's go ahead and click publish. And then when we view it, I'm logged in, so I won't see that. So let's see what it looks like when I'm logged out. Great, and then they can log in. And see when we logged in, it redirected us to this thank you page. Again, you'll want to maximize this and maybe put a members area or make it, maybe put a welcome page. Where is it that you want to send them? You want to add that here. If you don't want an actual page, but you want to change this up, we can also do that. Let's do a widget instead of a login page. So I'm gonna click out of that, go back to my WordPress dashboard under appearance. Let's go back to widgets. And we're replacing the old meta I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna expand that and click delete. And what we wanna do instead is we want to add a WP Forms widget area. So I'm scrolling down to find WP Forms. Left click and drag this up here and give it a title. We want to make sure we select our form, my garden blog login, and we'll click save. Now we'll see it in action. And again, since I'm logged in, you won't see anything, but if I log out and go to the home page, we'll have a nice little login area for me. So those are some very easy ways to allow user registration on your WordPress website. Did you learn something from today's video? If so, subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll send more helpful tips to help you manage your WordPress website. And thanks for watching.